there's an assumption that people have that you cannot have balance. The whole first part of your career, the first 20 years, is all about sort of making money, digging down, getting ahead, and then you can relax and, and retire on a beach somewhere. And I think that that's also um, leads to unhealth um, in my experience. I think you can have balance. I remember in my first job, um, you know, investment banking, New York. Um, most of you know what that job looks like. I mean, it's sort of 100 hours of work, and you're just a slave, and you do whatever the senior people leave you at 8 o'clock at night on their desk and say, have ready at 7 o'clock uh, the next morning. Um, <clears throat> to me, balance has always been really important. And um, one of the things, so I like to exercise and work out. I like to do things in the outdoors. Um, I have uh, life in my church. Um, I have friends. So, you know, giving up my life for two years just seemed like a bad proposition. And as soon as I got to that job, I realized that's what they were asking. They were saying, no, for two years, you're our boy, and you're going to do whatever we ask you. So I sat down with my manager. I said, look, um, you know, I've got other interests, and um, there's some things that are really important to me. And in my church, um, what we do is, you know, the Mormon church, as some of you know, there's no paid clergy. Um, people volunteer for roles. And I was, uh, I was actually asked to be the scoutmaster uh, for a troop of Boy Scouts. And so, you know, that's not the easiest thing to do while you're pulling off being an investment bank analyst. You have weekend activities. You have a meeting every Tuesday night. And so I sat down with my manager and I said, look, I know this is going to seem a little bit nonstandard, but this is really important to me. And I want to be judged for the work product that I do, not how many hours I'm there. You know, I don't want to work. I don't want to get any less done than anybody else. But I want to tell you that this is a really important thing, being the scout leader. And I essentially cut a deal with him. It said, look, you know, I'm going to be judged on my work product. And what was amazing is everybody in the organization got really into the fact that I was the scoutmaster. They just thought it was so nonconventional, you know, junior investment banker, scoutmaster. And the scouts, I had uh, probably mistakenly, the first scout meeting, I'd given them all my business card. It was the first time I had a business card in life, and I thought that was really cool. I said, call me any time. So they would call all the time. <laughs> and so over the intercom, there I am at, you know, this big high-rise on Wall Street, and, you know, the, uh, the receptor say, uh, Stan, we've got a scout on line three, one holding on line four. But it got me out of an amazing amount of work because people basically rallied around. Oh, no, no, Stan, we can't give him any work for the weekend. He's got a camping trip. We've got to take care of the Boy Scouts. That's very important in the community. And so, you know, it seems a little bit ridiculous in retrospect, but I have found that, that lesson translatable in subsequent jobs. If you sit down and you talk about what's important to you, most people, so for me that's important. It might not be important for some of you, but balance is important to me. I don't want to do one thing all the time. You know, people always ask, well, how are you teaching two classes at Stanford? You know, you're running an investment bank. I do it because it's important. And you can make things in your life work if they're important to you, and you communicate effectively with your peers, you know, your, your bosses about that. So I just don't believe that you have to give it up all for work. I don't think any job is that interesting. There's nothing that I could do for 60 hours a week and be happy. Um, so I think for me, it's been better to be a generalist.